Don't worry about the language. Let, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another edition of Muzzy Buzz. We're back, we're back, we're back. I'm so glad to be here. I hope you guys are happy because I missed you guys and I hope you guys miss me too. So before we get into the video, uh, I just want to remind you guys to like, comment, share, and hit the bell because that way you'll be notified every time I drop a new video. I still haven't worked out a schedule yet of when I'm going to be dropping videos, but you will be the first to know if you hit that bell. I should be coming out with a more regular schedule once I get everything in order. I'm planning on doing some changes and getting some new equipment. So once I get everything all situated, I'll have a better idea of when my scheduled releases will be. So with that out of the way, what a crazy week it's been. Uh, first of all, Eid Mubarak, Kul Aam Wa Antum Bikhair to everybody that is watching and celebrated Eid and enjoyed it with their families and, uh, you know, took advantage of those first 10 days of the Hijjah. Uh, so many thanks for everything that we have. You know, Alhamdulillah, we were able to see another Eid and I am happy to be able to celebrate that with my family. And I hope you guys were able to celebrate it with your families. Uh, so Eid was pretty good this year. Uh, it was kind of quiet, but it was good because it landed on a Sunday and I didn't really have to take off work, but I flew back home to Chicago to spend it with my parents and that was really a good thing. So that is a reminder too, uh, for any of you that have parents that are elderly or even just, you know, even mid-aged parents, uh, always remember to take care of them. You'll realize what a blessing that is, especially as they get older and you get older and you realize you know, how important they are in your life and when you have children and you'll appreciate what your parents did. So make sure you take advantage of that if you have parents. Uh, I know I did and I had a wonderful time with my family and I hope you guys did as well too. So with that out of the way, uh, the whole Epstein fiasco, I mean... I don't know about you guys, but I had a feeling that this guy was going to be killed. Now, I'm not generally somebody that follows conspiracy theories and, you know, I'm not following Alex Jones and, you know, Infowars and all those kinds of things. But something was really off about Epstein just supposedly committing suicide. Um, well, what we're learning now is according to CBS and other news outlets right now, we're finding out that they are being investigated for fraud and for false claims. Uh, the prison guards that supposedly made or, or falsified information were supposed to be watching Epstein, who was on a suicide watch, right? And then he was supposedly taken off. But what we do know is that he was in segregation. And not to mention, he was a high-profile criminal, meaning that everybody had eyes on this guy, right? You wouldn't want to just let anybody watch this criminal because, you know, a lot of eyes are on you and we're looking forward to having you know, his day in court where we get to find out more information because as you know, his net, I guess his uh, network of people are like very important people. We're talking about state leaders, politicians, Hollywood people, you know, I mean, celebrities, a wide variety of people that could be implicated in this weird pedophile, island-type situation. A very strange guy. Apparently, if you've seen some pictures of his island, he has some very strange-looking like temple things and 
Very strange guy. He had nude pictures of women everywhere and would involve himself in some very strange practices. Apparently, he had a ranch out in New Mexico where he was planning on creating this super baby or like offspring that would be uh, made from his sperm and like good looking, intelligent women. And apparently, he was very selective and he would interview women. And he was planning on, you know, creating this master species or offspring or whatever he was thinking about doing. Apparently, he would invite scientists and try to uh, collaborate with them. And with the hopes of giving them money for their grants and research. Uh, But a lot of scientists ended up saying, you know what, Uh, this guy is nuts and he doesn't know what he's talking about. But in any case, uh, you know... He apparently wanted to, when he died, they, he wanted his head and his genitals to be frozen for indefinite amounts of time for whatever reason. So you're getting an idea that this guy was definitely on the strange side. Like he was definitely weird. Uh, but nonetheless, there was a lot of information that was recovered from you know, his compound in, in uh, I think, Little, Little Thomas Island, or I forgot exactly where it was, but I think it's Little Thomas and Big Thomas Islands that he had out in the Caribbean, and also his mansion in New York. Apparently, they have uncovered documentation, and they have direct links to politicians and celebrities that he would frequently call or that would visit him, And so you can tell the guy was plugged with a lot of important people. And that kind of criminal, you just don't leave unattended, right? I mean, this is the case that the world is going to be watching, right? It's not some small criminal or some little event. Everybody's watching you. So you wouldn't just let him, you know, be unwatched. So with that being said... Apparently, he dies of suicide, and there are conflicting reports. Like, the guy apparently had a heart attack. You know, one anonymous source from inside the prison said that he had heart failure. And the official story is that he committed suicide. And apparently, he was supposed to be on suicide watch. But then he was taken off. But then he was supposed to be being, he was supposed to, you know, he was supposed to be monitored, essentially. For because he was a high profile criminal. So, what happens is now we're finding out through the new news leak that they're being investigated for falsifying information. And what does that mean? It means that they lied about how often they checked on Epstein. Apparently, a source from within the prison is saying that. He was dead for maybe one to two hours before they even found out. Now, that is very strange. And another very strange thing is that there was a temporary employee assigned to him to watch over him. Now, is it strange or extremely uncommon that there would be a temporary employee? Maybe not. Apparently, there were reports that this particular prison was overworked and they didn't have enough staff. So potentially, maybe could they have hired temporary employees? Yeah, that would make sense. But no way would you assign a temporary employee to watch a high-profile inmate like Jeffrey Epstein. It wouldn't make sense, right? I mean, this is the case that everybody's watching. And if something happens, the warden and that prison, you know, it'll be on them. But yet alone, they put a temporary employee to watch Jeffrey Epstein. And while that temporary employee was supposed, supposed to be watching, uh, Epstein dies. Now, that's very strange. I mean, it seems, I, like I said, I don't want to be conspiratorial here, but it seems like this is a classic case of corruption. You know, prisons are a business and... You know, if you know somebody who knows somebody and there's connections, kind of like mafioso, where, you know, uh, you're going to put somebody in place and look the other way 
and let, you know, some things pass. And so that's what it's kind of looking like right now. And I don't know, maybe you guys can help me figure this out or share your comments. I don't have all the details. I'm still kind of piecing together everything, but I haven't figured it out yet. But all I do know is that I don't believe that it, it is a suicide. I, I think that this is a very strange situation and that uh, I think there are a lot of questions that people have that are unanswered. And I think that an investigation is in line and I think we'll find out a lot about what happened and perhaps even, you know, who may have done it. Because like I said, there are a lot of politicians and celebrities that have connections to him and it wouldn't be too far out to think that somebody wanted him dead, right? So that's what I'm thinking. I don't know. You guys can let me know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below or tweet at me at Twitter, uh, MortTMM. That's my Twitter handle. Make sure that you uh, tweet at me what you guys think. Uh, and let me know. I'm curious. I mean, we're going we're gonna to be finding out a lot more information uh, over these next few weeks. And we'll try to piece together what happened here. Uh, but let's, let's see. I mean, it could be really a suicide. We don't know. Maybe it actually really was a suicide, but we'll have to figure out. So I'll update you or I'll share my thoughts when I find out more information or if I think something is compelling enough. And uh, I'll share that with you guys maybe in a different video. So I wanted to talk about something a little bit different. And I wanted to wrap up my video with this here. Uh, I was recently on Twitter, you know, tweeting along. And so I saw this Muslim sister who had tweeted saying that she's really struggling with wearing hijab that day. And I thought about it. And, you know, me being a man, I cannot understand what a woman has to go through in America wearing a hijab, right? I mean, we just, as men, we don't have that experience. For us, it's easy. We just grow a beard like some of us do. And, you know, now beards are in fashion. And so it's not really a taboo thing or, you know, we don't really stand out. But a hijab for sure will stand out and somebody would, able, would be able to identify that that particular woman is a Muslim. So I can understand and appreciate the amount of pressure uh, that they feel. So I just wanted, I tweeted back at her and I said, I don't know what you're going through, but what you have to remember is that Allah has honored you and Allah has chosen you. And he saw something good in you that he allowed you to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Like for that, meaning Allah has blessed you. So if he's blessing you with that, there's a reason for that. You know, never forget that. You are chosen. You are special. There's something about you that Allah has blessed you and honored you. He has, I mean, out of, look how many billions of people in the world are not blessed with the ability to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And that is such a big ni'mah to us, a, such, a, such a big blessing to us. And if you think about it in that context, I know it's kind of, you know, cliche that, oh yeah, I'm a Muslim, alhamdulillah, yes, you know, but think about it deeper. You know, Allah has identified something within your soul, within your body, within your mind, within your heart, that there is goodness in you and Allah wishes good for you. And since He wishes good for you, He allows you to be a Muslim. Because really, to be honest, there is no other way to get into paradise, right? Except by believing in Allah and by His mercy, right? So part of His mercy, an extension of that is allowing you to be a Muslim and to be guided and to see the truth. So remember that whenever you feel down, if there's any sister out there or any brothers who know sisters that are struggling with this, don't judge them. You know, don't, don't you know, make them feel like, they're, uh, you know, weak or that they are not as strong as you because they're questioning their hijab or because they're feeling down about it, just remind them that Allah has chosen them. And even if they make mistakes, even if they decide to take it off, there's still an opportunity 
that they can correct themselves because they still have Iman. Even though Iman goes up and down, they still have it. And that in itself is a blessing. That in itself can be a mercy to you. And it can draw you back to Islam as long as you don't forget and you don't lose hope in Allah and you don't uh, you know, forget His mercy. And I think that's the important thing I wanted to hit home here is that you know, you're going to find moments in life where you feel you know, that you're desperate or that you feel down or you feel like your iman is completely you know, not the same as it was before. But that is the normal part of iman, meaning that it'll go up and it'll go down. And iman is something that you, it goes up based on the actions that you do, the good actions, and it can go down based on the bad actions that you do. So if you feel that fluctuation in your iman, try to identify things that maybe you could be doing, you could be doing better, or maybe increase some of the good deeds that you're doing, maybe by giving sadaqah or praying more, or maybe even charity as in the form of smiling at somebody or helping somebody across the street, an elderly person, something that will boost your iman or, or, or something, something that will increase your ajar or your goodness, that Allah will ease your, your, uh, your, your situation so that you feel content. Right? Remember that. But the most important thing is that if you are a Muslim, remember that Allah has honored you with being able to say, La ilaha illallah. That in itself is such a huge honor and nobody should forget that. So if you ever feel down, remember that. There is something special in you. Never forget that. So I think that is a conclusion of this video. I try to keep these videos short and to the point, uh, generally, generally related to what I'm thinking. For those of you that are not familiar with me, I don't like to make long videos unless the topic really demands it. But I try to keep my thoughts pretty short here. So with that being said, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get 100 subscribers so that I can get a custom URL. Right now I got some bogus URL that doesn't even look cool. It makes me look cheap and I don't like to look cheap. So help me out. Subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your brother, tell your sister, tell everybody, tell your wife, tell your kids, I don't care. Let them subscribe, help me get a custom URL, and uh, make sure you hit the bell so that you can get notified when I drop new videos. So until then, I will catch you on the flip side. I'll see you guys later, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We're out. Mussy buzz, 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 m